Where do you think or where do you suggest where life begins? Is it in the womb? Is it when you are delivered? Is it when, do you th when, do you, when, when does the soul enter the body? Now you are assuming things. <laughs> well, I've, I've heard from, from where, I mean, whatever my learning <laughs> no, no. and conditioning you, as you can call. Now I'm talking about you and me and people here. Now you're bringing an other person called soul. Yes. Uh, let us use the word life because the word soul okay. is heavily contaminated. Uh, you know, people are finding soulmates. <laughs> it's very clear, <laughs> it's very, very clear. Your body needs a mate, your mind may need a mate. But the soul, if it is absolute, it definitely will not need a mate, isn't it? Uh, but so many things have… let's call it life. Okay. It's… it's less co <laughs> corrupted word. <laughs> As life does not engage with the body just like that, it happens as a process. When a… a woman or a mother conceives, two little cells coming together, then becomes a meatball, literally. For this meatball to become a life, it is somewhere between forty to forty-eight days after conception that the life process enters. I don't know much what the medical opinion is. Are there any doctors here? Huh? Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm saying this from my personal experience, it's forty to forty-eight days, that's a space where you enter. There are some lives which enter later. Suppose, see this is something uh, a woman or a mother could feel if we train her a little bit. If she sees that a life entered beyond forty-eight days, then you're delivering somebody truly special because this life will take time to settle in. Some phenomenal life is on the way. You have heard somebody sees, uh, uh, you know, Gautama's mother and this man says, you are going to deliver a phenomenal being. Somebody looks at Yashoda and says to the mother, you are delivering a phenomenal being. This is simply because when you notice after forty-eight days of conception, still life has not entered but enters a little later than that, this means you are expecting a phenomenal being to arrive. Why it is so, if I go into the intricacies, it'll take you somewhere. But normal life enters somewhere between forty to forty-eight days. Now after this, for some reason, after all womb is a manufacturing unit of this body, for some reason if the, the, uh, the body did not form itself appropriately for that life or for any life, then the life chooses to exist before it's delivered. So this is a stillborn baby. Or sometimes because of whatever compulsions a mother may choose to abort the child, that is another form of thing. But in these things the engagement with the body for this life truly begins somewhere approximately between eighty-four to ninety days is where really life gets engaged. Till then it's foraging, it is looking if this is suitable, if this womb is the right place. This is not a conscious thing, this is an unconscious tendency-wise, it is seeing if it matches by tendencies. The appropriate word for this is traditionally we call this vasanas. Depending upon your vasana, you're looking for an appropriate body. So though it is partially engaged, it can exit before ninety days, before… between eighty to… eighty-four to ninety days, 
the life gets properly engaged. From then on, it's a proper baby. Sadhguru, what should be the role of a good parent in uh, today's world? See, parenthood is a very funny thing. You're trying to do something that nobody has ever known how to do it well. <laughs> yes? Nobody had… has ever known what is the best way to parent their children. Even if you have twelve children, you're still learning <laughs> You may raise the eleven properly, the twelfth one can give you <laughs> works, you know. <laughs> so, but you want to do your best. So what is the best thing you can do? One foremost thing I would say is, uh, first thing is to work upon yourself a little bit. Spend sufficient time with yourself. Look at yourself carefully. How you are, how you sit, how you stand, how you speak, what you do, what you don't do. I think you must look at yourself very carefully because the children are picking up everything rapidly and they'll exaggerate everything that you're doing. <laughs> so one foremost thing is at least make yourself in such a way that you would like to be. Somebody may not approve, it doesn't matter. At least you made yourself in such a way that you like the way you are. At least that much you must do. Maybe you cannot raise to somebody else's standards. We don't know what kind of standards they set for you. But at least you must become the way you like it, the way you are. That is a must. But that will only create the necessary ambience. It still doesn't make you necessarily a good parent, but it creates the necessary ambience. But creating the necessary ambience is a large part of parenthood large part. If you create the right kind of atmosphere of a certain sense of joy and love and care and discipline for yourself and your home atmosphere, generally they grow up. Of course you want to provide opportunities for them. Each one of us can provide opportunities only to the extent it's available to us, isn't it? Yes? You cannot provide an opportunity for which you don't have access. You will always do according to your limitations. I am sure in that area you will do your best, but the important thing is what kind of human beings or brats you raise. For that, what kind of human being are you is an extremely important part of raising children. So, uh, if your wife became pregnant, it's time for transformation for you. <laughs> because now another life is coming in. You yourself are the way you don't like yourself to be. Definitely one more need not go that way, isn't it? So making… becoming conscious of what we are doing is extremely important. What should we teach? What we, sh what we should do? I think one important thing that you should teach your children is that they learn to question everything, but not with suspicion, with a genuine wanting to know. Questioning can become a very sick thing or a very healthy process. People question, because they already suspect everything is evil. This is a sickness. But you… the basic purpose of a question, question is an instrument which helps you to dig a little deeper than where you are, isn't it so? Yes? Question is essentially an instrument with which you can dig a little deeper. That's the purpose of a question. If you just bring this into your child's mind, 
that a child can question anything, including you, the way you are, if you allow that, in a healthy way, not in a sick way, questioning things because you think something is wrong with everybody. If you bring this, the child is constantly exercising his intelligence. This will not ensure whether he's going to become a doctor, engineer, this, that, but one thing is clear, his intelligence is active. If you anyway put him through the necessary physical paces to give him a healthy body and an active intelligence, and of course some level of education according to what you can afford, and you bring him up without any sense of identity, without any sense of identity, if you can bring him up, if you do not entangle his intelligence by being identified to this or that, that he is willing and open to everything. If you bring him up this way, the best possible that he can make out of his life, he will do. He may not become like somebody else, but he will grow to his maximum potential. Of course it depends on along the way who he meets, what happens, what situations he gets into, whether he kind of comes into a spiritual space or he goes into a war zone, where he ends up, who knows? Those things you cannot control, isn't it? But if you create an atmosphere of love, meditativeness, openness, when you're not identified with anything, naturally there is no sense of prejudice. If you bring up a child free of prejudice, in a loving, very open atmosphere, generally they do well, but there is no guarantee because there are other influences in the society, you don't know into whose hands they'll fall tomorrow morning, yes? You may be doing your best, tomorrow morning into whose hands your child will fall. There is no insurance or guarantee, that's a risk that you're taking always. But uh, the only thing is, did you do your best or not, that's all there is to life. Ishwara. Sure